know there's a light that glows by the front door Don't forget the keys under the mat When childhood stars shine Always stay humble and kind Go to church cause your mama says to Visit grandpa every chance that you get won't be wasted time Always stay humble and kind Hold the door, say please, say thank you Don't steal, don't cheat and don't lie I know you got mountains to climb But always stay humble and kind When the dream your dreaming come to you when the work you put in is realized let yourself feel the pride always stay humble and kind hey it's james here from goodguitarist.com and in today's lesson i'm going to show you how to play humble and kind by tim mcgraw now this song is a three chord wonder, meaning it's the same chords in the same order the entire time. And on top of that, these are some really easy chord shapes. So this is a great song if you're a beginner. The strumming part isn't necessarily the easiest, but you could always simplify it. The chord shapes though are so magnificently easy. And if you find that you do need extra help with them, I have two resources. There's my free ebook, which is available to all my subscribers, and um, there's a link down below for that. It goes over all the basic chord shapes, chord switching, some rhythm stuff, and I also have a complete beginner's guitar course, which goes through all the basics in depth. You know, it's designed to help anyone, even people who are struggling, to master the basics. So I recommend checking out both of those resources if you find that you need some help with this lesson. Anyways, before we get started, we gotta put a capo on the fourth fret. If we don't use a capo, this song is brutally hard. It's bar chords the whole time, and it's not gonna sound right. Using the capo gives us the right position on the fretboard and everything. It's a really great tool. Make sure it's nice and snug, that all your strings work, and sometimes you might have to do some fine tuning on your guitar just in case the capo puts it out of tune a little bit. And now that we got that taken care of, we can start out with the chord shapes. Our first chord is G. And from there, we're gonna switch to E minor seven. And you might notice that I only had to move one finger to do that. That's one of the things that's cool about this song is that we're actually gonna be leaving these two fingers down the entire time for every single chord shape. So we have G, we just move one finger, we get E minor seven, and then we put these fingers here. So it kind of looks like G, except instead of being on the bottom strings, we just move it up, and that's C add nine. And there's actually a whole unit in my course that uses these chords and shows you how you can play through thousands of songs with just these ones. Anyways, I recommend practicing switching between them, just going G to E minor seven a whole bunch of times, getting used to moving that one finger, and then going from E minor seven to C. That's probably the hardest one here. And then finally from C, to G. So once you've worked on those a little bit, we can practice playing them in order, starting out on G. We're gonna do down strokes only, and since this song is in 3-4 time, we're gonna be counting to 3 for every measure. You'll see at the top, it's it's really simple. You'll you can always watch it and then rewind it and try again. Anyways, we're starting out on G, nice and slow, down strokes only. One, two, three. Let's do it one more time. 
To get lost if you don't count, you know, if you don't keep track of where you are. Two, three, one, two, three. So basically, we counted to three four times and then we would switch to the next chord. So it might help to kind of rewind the tape and practice through that part a few times, counting along, maybe not even trying to play, just watching, counting, and kind of getting what's going on before you try it yourself because it's really important that you keep your place in the music. You know, you want to switch chords at the same time so that everything makes sense. Anyways, once you can do that, once you can count along, play nice clean chord switches, you're ready to take a look at the strumming pattern, which goes like this. And that's a pretty simple strumming pattern. It's just down, down, up, up. And we're counting in three, so if we count out this strumming pattern, one and two and three and one and So those two downs are on beat one, two, one, and two, and the ups are on and, the and after two, and the and after three. One, and two, and three, and, and when you put that together, one, and two, and three, and. So I recommend starting with the counting, just one, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three and once you got that nice steady pace laid out you could say the motions down down up up down down up up one and two and three and down down up up and once you're feeling that rhythm and you can count it out you can try it on guitar one and two and You want to be able to play it a whole bunch of times in a row. And we're going to be playing it four times on the G chord, four times on E minor, four times on C, four times on G. So every time we switch, we play it four times. And if this is too easy for you, I have a challenge for you. This will make it sound a lot more like the original recording. I'm on my G chord here. Instead of going, which is cool, you know, that sounds like the song. We could go. So what I'm doing there is palm muting each chord. I'm lightly touching the strings. See, there's a little bit of overlap. Not too much. If you do too much, you completely kill the strings. You'll feel that you'll feel there's like a sweet spot where you get just a good amount of tone. And we're gonna do little strokes. We're not gonna do, you know, big strokes. We're gonna do, be really gentle. Same pattern though, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. It's all about finesse. If you watch a professional guitarist playing, they're gonna be using the same components that you probably know. They're gonna be using G chords and all that kind of stuff. The only difference is they're making every note count for so much by doing little things like that. So if you do wanna, you know, get more and more advanced, Paying attention to all these little things and being really good at the simplest stuff is actually the best way to get there. So now let's try putting the strumming pattern together with the chords. Either way, whether you're doing it open or palm muted, whatever way you want to do it, we're going to play it nice and slow. Here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three.
Now before, I gave you the option to either play it open or palm muted. And I think if you can do it both ways, it's even better because that way it gives you some dynamic contrast as you play the song. And dynamic is just a fancy word for volume. And what I mean by that is, say we're doing the verse, you know, the quiet part of the song. And then we go into the chorus. Then we can kind of change to the other way. And that's really good for the more intense parts of the song. You'd want to be doing it like that so that it's louder and, you know, more emotional. Anyways, that's all it takes to play humble and kind. So I recommend going through this bit by bit, practicing the chord shapes first, then working out the strumming pattern, if you can, doing the palm muted one, but don't worry about that if you're just getting started. Like, I wouldn't tell one of my students to try that unless they've been playing for a couple months already. So have fun with this one, try your best. If you need extra help, don't forget to check out my free ebook, or better yet, my complete beginner's course, and I'll see you soon.